Hi, this is Pete at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and right now we're on tutorial number 57. So to recap, in our previous tutorials we've gone ahead and created our finite state engine for our mob generator. Now I've gone ahead and just added a few comments while the other one compiled and uploaded. And we have the structure of the engine set up and now we're just basically filling in all the guts. So I'm going to start off with the initialize part. Now to initialize we want to make sure that everything that we need for this script to run is present. So for this script all we really need is to make sure that we have you know, some mobs here that we can create and also some spawn points to spawn the mobs on. So that's actually pretty simple. I'm going to create a function down here Actually, I'm going to create two of them. One is just going to check to see if we have the the mob prefabs loaded in, at least one of them, and also to make sure that we have at least one spawn point. So I'll write the comment first. Check to see that we have at least one mob prefab to spawn. And this will be a private function it's going to return a boolean value and I'm just going to call it uh, let's see check for mob prefabs it doesn't receive any parameters so here's where this comes into play so mob prefabs is the area that holds all of our mob prefabs so all I'm going to do is just check to see that it, it has at least one. So mob prefabs dot length is greater than zero. Then I'm going to return true. Else return false. If I spell it right. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for our spawn points. So check to see. Uh, I believe it's double O. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Check to see if we have at least one spawn point to spawn mobs. At. And we'll create this function, which is private. Again, it returns a bool, not a book. And we'll just call it check for spawn points. And it doesn't receive any variables. And it works the same. So I'll just go up, cut and paste the name, spawn points. And we'll say if spawn points dot length is greater than zero return true else false and then in our initiation statement up here which is right here I'm actually going to check the value for those to make sure that they both return true so if check for mob prefabs and what I want to check for is if it returns false so if we put the exclamation mark in front of it it's saying if it's doesn't return true so it's going to say if we don't have any mob prefabs loaded up I'm just simply going to return no value or anything I'm just going to return so if the mobs aren't set up, it returns and it never gets its state set to set up. And I'll do the exact same thing for check for spawn points. And don't forget the little explanation mark. There we go. So now let's go ahead and go into unity and let's remove all of these waypoints 
and we'll notice the state is idle. If we start it up, you'll notice it just keeps going through the initialization. And over here, it's initialized. It's to set to initialization. Now we can force it to go to setup over here, and it'll run through and finish off and go to idle. But let's add our spawn points back in. So we want three. We'll grab the first one. Grab the second one and grab the third. And when we run, it should just run through all the, the stages again and just end. So that's working fine. Now the next stage is setup. And for this particular finite state machine, I don't really see anything we have to set up. I'm not going to delete it yet because there might be something that I think of later on but for now I'm just going to jump straight into spawn mob and for spawn mob the way I want this to work is I'm going to go into unity and I'm going to use these spawn points as the parents for the mobs so I'm basically going to go in and say does this spawn point have any children if it does then that spawn point is going to be considered to already have a mob associated with it. And I'll do the same thing for spawn point two and spawn point three. So I'm gonna make a separate function for that. And I'll just add it down here. And I'll do the comment first. So we'll just wanna generate a list of available spawn points that do not have any mobs childed to it and then the function which would be private it's going to return an array of game objects so game object and we'll just call it available game or spawn points it doesn't receive any parameters now right off the bat we're going to want to create a list and to create a list you'll want to add the using system dot collections dot generic and then we can come down here and create a list and we'll want to typecast it as game objects and I'm just going to call it GOS for game objects it's good, only going to be used in this function it's temporary we're throwing it away and this is going to be equal to new list so now let's iterate through the spawn points that we know we have and check to see if they have a game object underneath them so we'll just do a simple for loop and we'll use the spawn points dot length and inside we check to see uh, how many children it has the, ch the child count and we'll just see if it's less than one or well, actually we'll just do we'll see if it's zero, zero. And if it is, I'm just going to throw a debug log out. Uh, do a couple stars. Spawn point available. And then I'm just going to add it to that list up there I created. So, game objects dot add. And this is called spawn point. CNT. Then after we're done this for loop, I'm going to have to return a, an array of game objects. And I currently have a list of game objects, but that's fine because list comes with a way to convert itself to an array and return it. So return GOS dot to array. And we have an error up here. We forgot to tell it what variable we're using for the counter. 
Uh, everything looks fine. So we'll head back up into our spawn mob function, which was, should be up here. Set up spawn mob right here. And we're going to create an area of game objects to hold those available ones that we created. And it returns an array of them. Doesn't matter what you call them. I'm just going to call mine GOS equals. Then we'll want to call that function, which I forget what we named already. Available spawn mobs, or spawn points. So we'll want to iterate through that and just simply spawn a random mob underneath it. So four, we'll create a counter. And us dot length. So we'll create a game object to hold it. I'm just going to call it geo and then we'll instantiate the new prefab and the prefab we want to instantiate will just be a random mob out of our array so for that we can just do random range and we'll say give us a mob between zero and the max length of our mob prefab range. And this here should be a curly brace. Oh, I'm sorry, no. It's an index of an array, so it should be squared, and this should be curly. Or not curly, but rounded to parentheses. Now we want the position that we want it to spawn at. So I want it to spawn at the location of this game object, which is actually the available spawn point. So I'm going to say GOS, the spot we're on, dot transform, dot position. And then the direction it's going to face, uh, just have it face the direction that the spawn point is. So identity. And we'll want to make sure that we're spawning it as a game object. Uh, let me see, after that, this should actually be moved over here a bit. Then after we're done spawning it, we're going to want to set its parent. So geo.transform.parent is going to be equal to GOS CNT dot transform. Okay, let's see if we have any errors. None popping up. Let's start it up. And there we go, it spawned two water and one fire. Now let's go ahead and we'll delete one. So I'm gonna delete this fire one. Then I'm gonna go up to game settings, sorry, mob generator, and reset its state to spawn mob. And we notice it spawned another one. So we'll go ahead and Delete that one again. And let's, whoops, I keep selecting the wrong one. We'll just reset the state to spawn mob. And it gave us a fire. Now I'm just going to restart it a couple times to make sure that we're actually getting the regular one. And there we go. So we know all three have a chance of popping up. So there we go. We have mobs popping up at the spawn points that we've decided to place on our map. You can place as many spawn points as you want and position them anywhere you want. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.